Welcome back, guys. So this is my take two in trading, trading, in recording. <laughs> I just spent time here talking to myself for the last 20 minutes and didn't realize I wasn't even recording this thing. So um, I'm going to try to um, get through this once more time, once more. Okay. Um, so I was looking at, you know, first of all, one of the things that I've been hearing Stacey Burke talk about a lot is just being a master at the setups that you are taking. And so I have been really working on mastering the three day setup, right? Whether it's going to be a Friday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever, right? I'm really working on mastering that. Um, so, you know, let's look at GU. GU is actually one of my favorite setups. It's the one, it's a peak formation high, right? By the time I get to the market, the low is already in place. All right. The low is already in place. So I'm expecting this thing to go short. That's all I'm thinking. This thing should be short. And if we look at it, if we look three days back, right? Cause Wednesday would be day one, day two, day three, Wednesday's day one, Thursday's day two, Friday's day three. So we, you know, prices were at the high of the initial balance of Tuesday. Okay. Um, and then it didn't really close below or anything like that. Thursday, we get the signal, right? Not only did we get the signal, we also had price close below the open. So that to me, excuse me, is a big indicator that we're going short because sometimes we'll get the signal. Um, and I'll show you, like, sometimes you'll get the signal on a Wednesday, um, Price doesn't do anything on Thursday. And so then you have to wait for the third day. In, in this particular case, it's Friday. So I'm seeing that this coming after this signal confirmed, right? We have a low already in place. And what I like to do is I always like to take the previous day high and the low. And that's where I put this 50% mark. And I'm like, okay, price has got to come to this area and do something, right? We're looking to take trades from the high, the low, and the open price or the close price, whichever indicator that you're using. I honestly don't have a bias on, on that. It's whatever it is, because I think they're pretty close. Um, or if you're just drawing it, right? If you don't have an indicator, you're just drawing it like I did here. Like, this is MT5. I don't have an indicator for the close price or the open price, right? For the day. And for me, they often are pretty close, so I don't I don't get too particular about it. So on the day itself, um, I see the low, I see the high, um, the entry could be right at the open price or the close price, which is right here at the open range low of the week. That is the entry and our target could be the daily low, right? And then that would be it for the day. Cause it's Friday. I mean, I don't know if it's going to continue, right? I don't know. So now my second favorite uh, trade setup that I want to master is the second, this will now change to a two, which will now put Monday as the third day. So what do we have here so far? We have, we have a break of the previous day low. That's a check. Markets did close down. That's another check, right? I mean, perhaps it could come down, right? It can open sideways a little bit. It can climb up to this 50% area, and then it could start to break down. I don't know if that's going to happen beautifully like that. <laughs> it might just do nothing on Monday. And then Wednesday, it could give me the trade, excuse me, Tuesday, it could give me the trade. So I'm going to, I'm going to make that note on mine because I wrote this here guys in my journal as one of the trade setups. I was going to come back and look at for GU because I, would love to see this thing break the low. And if it doesn't break the low and it just goes sideways all day, then guess what? Tuesday is going to be the trade. Okay. Let me just mark it on here first. Then I'll transition this. So I'm going to write here. Uh, if no trade okay 
that did not want to work. Hold on, let's try this again. So yeah, here we go. If no trade, come back Tuesday because I would really love to see this thing either go sideways because right now um, this is the low, Friday's low of the week. Pretty darn close to, actually I'm going to move this up. Oops, that's not what I was trying to do. This is the closing price, right? So what I'm expecting is price to either, I want, I'm expecting it to extend the range to go lower. That's what I'm expecting it to do. Um, and then it could just, you know, hold the low, who knows? Or it could come up and then get to this area and maybe I'll get a scalping short trade. You know, that could happen too, right? So I'm not gonna just, I'm not going to think Monday's gonna be a fantastic <laughs> day uh, three trend trade for me. I don't know yet. I'm just gonna wait to see what happens with Asia and then go from there, all right? So, um, let's look at DJ real quick because I've already marked DJ up. So DJ, we also have Friday confirmed as a, as a, you know, a zero, a new peak. So when Monday opens, this is going to be a one, right? So as of right now, it's looking pretty good. It closed above the open, right? That's what we want it to do. And the next thing I wanted to do <laughs> is break the high, right? And then give me a retest at the high. You know, it could come down to this area here, 180R, and then continue to go up. But if it comes to 180R and breaks down, then we're, we're going to go short, right? But if it holds this level and goes up, then that'll be great. I'll be looking to go long, okay? And that will be the day, technically a day two trend trade on day one. I don't hope I'm not make, messing you guys up, but <laughs> that's what I'll, I'll be looking for. Um, GJ, it was GJ. Actually, I want to talk about GCAD because the GCAD um, gave us the 33 trade. Now, I don't know if this is, this is not like the 33 trade that you'd hear from um, any of the guys out there, right? Um, the way I look at it, I have, so GCAB has three peak, three days from the peak and it broke the low three times and it's already at max ADR. So, um, Friday was the day three trade. Okay. So we had here a nice pump. We got a high on Tuesday, extended the range. Wednesday, we got the confirmation that this high is now locked in price closed below the open. If you took this trade short because it would have technically been a day two trend trade on the day three reset day, then that would have been great, right? Um, we would then count this as one, right? Based on how Steve, uh, Stacey Burke counts Wednesday being day one, right? Resetting from, from day three, Thursday being a day two trade and then Friday being the day three trade. So we, we would want to wait for the bigger scalable trade. However, taking this on that day, the day after the peak would have been just fine too. You would have gotten a trade. So Thursday comes here. Um, we're not really trading this. However, if you took the scalp from the high of the week, that works too. It broke the, high, the low. So Wednesday, that's one break of the low. Thursday was another break. So now I'm waiting for that third break of the low. And we had a nice three push pattern up. And we had a high of the day, high of the session, trend scalable trade. This one is like the best trade ever. These, and the thing, the thing is, guys, um, I have noticed that if this, like right now, the way these templates are laying up, they may be a variation. I'm be just let me just say, you may get slight variations, but the way these templates are laying out for the week could often just work out the same way next week as we're rolling into the last week of the month, into a new month. Um, I've seen it happen that way. I'm just going to watch and see if it's going to be that way where they pretty much set up the same way, but they have slight variations within the setup, but it's pretty much the same where you're not going to get a trade on day on a Thursday, right? Or maybe Tuesday you're going to get, if this happens next week, <laughs> we get the, um, 
the range expansions on Tuesdays, right? And then on Wednesdays, it confirms that we are now either short or long based on whether price, you know, how it responds to that, right? Because if this thing was going to continue long, then we would have broke the highs. We would have had setups where it was showing higher highs um, being break, broken, but it didn't, right? <laughs> In fact, we had a, a half Batman pattern, right, to indicate a short. And then we had the confirmation with price closing below the open. So this right here, this is beautiful. If you took this trade, great. If not, then this is just letting you know that you're going into the right direction. Because oftentimes, once this confirms, the next day should be the trade, right? If it does not give you that trade on that next day, then you're going to the third day, which is what happened, right? So if this happens, guys, guys, oh, we, I'm telling you, we have the crystal ball. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so that's how you would look at it. You always want to look to see where was the pump. We got the signal. Okay, great. The next day, did it confirm that this is right? Perfect. Boom. We should have a trade on Thursday. If we don't have a trade on Thursday, then boom, Friday is the third day from, so you look at Friday, you're like three days back. Oh, this is it. This is the trade. So then you can feel real comfortable adding size to that particular trade. Now let's look at G. Euro uh, GBP. This one, I I was looking at this on Wednesday like it was going to be a short, right? Because it, it was confirming initially as a one peak formation instead of a two, excuse me, a, excuse me. It was confirming as a, a one peak high instead of a two or a one peak low. Actually, it was, con <laughs> I'm confused right now, right? I'm telling you two things because I'm reading two peak low, but I promise you, Wednesday, this was showing a one peak high. It confirmed one peak low, right? When I came back to it, because I had drawn my area of, okay, price is either going to do one or two things at this level. And it actually did the opposite and went, it broke the high. So all we do now, right? This is Wednesday, which was a day three is now day one. Because if you, if you look Wednesday and you look three days back, you're like, okay, Wednesday, it was actually the day three, um, trend trade because prices were at the low for three days and didn't do much, didn't break nothing. So that's why when this thing broke the low here, it was confirming this initially as a one peak high because the lows were starting to break, right? But then when price decided to continue to break the highs, it then changed in real time to show us that we are not going short anymore. Okay. So don't think that, oh, the indicator doesn't work. No, you don't work. <laughs> price is going to always be right. Okay. <laughs> we have to figure out, like, we have to know market structure. That's why it changed from one to then a one peak high to a one peak low because the highs were being broken, not the lows. It hit the low, but it did not break that guys. That's just really basically what happened. So um, this is a trickier particular, uh, symbol. This is a trickier one to trade in London. I mean, excuse me for New York. So I often don't trade it because usually the moves are in London and, you know, I always try to get it in New York and it just doesn't work. Um, but it actually played out beautifully for New York. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and another thing too, here's another crystal ball for you. If the actual, if this works out, you see this initial push up happening in the later session, then it's going to happen again in the same later session. It always does that. So that's another crystal ball thing for you. Okay. So now we have, um, we have a high here that needs to be broken. I tell you what, if this thing broke the high on two, on Thursday, I would have been then been looking for three day, three pushes outside of the open range trade setup. where now, um, I was looking for, um, the second break because we had the first break here, right? Actually the indicator does not count the new peak break. I account mentally. The indicator does not do that on this because this is technically, um, actually I'm not going to call it a reset. I'm just going to keep it as it is. It's just a new peak low. It will count the breaks the day after it didn't count this particular break. So it's true that we only had one break of structure here, right? So we would just draw this line and wait for this thing to get, to get broken through, right? Oftentimes you're not going to get the retest, especially on a, on a day three parabolic trade setup like this, you're just not going to get a reset. So you can just get in there and, and just be happy. 
Um, but what day two did give us was another high on the inside that we could use um, to gauge, right? And that's what I did here. I just took that high to the low and then that 50% area is where um, I gauge to get into the market. You can also go in uh, on the day of, measure the high to the low and then use that to get in as well, okay? Day three trades. So that's what I've been working on, guys. I just recently got funded with Top Step Futures Markets. I'm really loving trading the futures now. So now I'm working on my payouts. So I'm just really excited about that and just trying to focus in and master in this three-day setup um, to compound my account and, uh, and, and, and just be trading for a living. You know, that's it. <laughs> So I hope you guys got some value here. I want you and I encourage you to go into, you know, take screenshots of your, of the indicator, go back to the, to the pairs that you trade. I do not trade all these. I'm actually going to scale some of these down, um, to the pairs that I like to trade that have the, the volume, right? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I typically have one just for what I call my futures setups, excuse me, the future symbols which is gold, silver, oil, the NASDAQ, uh, the Dow, and S&P. I have one just for that, just so I can just focus on that because those are the only things that I really can trade in the futures market anyway. So there's really no need for me to try and have all this here. So, um, but oftentimes I'll go into the Forex market and I'll trade in there as well. So, uh, but I still want to minimize the symbols that I am trading in Forex. So that's what you want to do, Okay. All right, guys, I hope you got some value here and we will see you in the next one.